We're going to consume insanely hot and uncomfortable spicy noodles. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, can, I can feel this, this spice here. Mm hmm. Hmm. Now it's got a little burn. <clears throat> it's actually very nice. Hmm. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. Welcome to the Risk Ready Podcast, brought to you by Reliance Insurance. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with Intax British Columbian Regional Vice President Henry Blumenthal, who speaks on his move to the West Coast and journey working in insurance. Risk exists wherever you are. Are you risk ready? I mean, do you find that uh, your daughter is more financially responsible than your son? Um, I think they're pretty much, it's, it's amazing to see that generation now. Yeah. They're not interested in, in buying a car, for example, which is very different than our generation. Yeah. Um, they pay attention to uh, their spending and they offer, oftentimes they offer to help. We go grocery shopping and they want something special for the dinner that we're going to be cooking all together, but they want to pay. And I find, you know, they're pretty generous in that, in that sense. Um, and yes, they pay more attention than, than, hmm. than we did when we were that age. You might want to take that DNA and market it. You're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so uh, you, the kid, they're not spendthrifts. Uh, they offer to contribute to higher value meals. Correct. Yeah. Correct. It's nice. It's fantastic. Yes. I'm very, we're nice. very fortunate, Carol and I, to have uh, such, such nice uh, kids. Mm -hmm. There's no question. Mm -hmm. Who was the tougher one to raise? The tougher one to they they, they all offered something different, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, as as new parents, when you have your first one, um, it's it's always a bit more demanding. You don't have the experience. You don't know what to do. And I, actually, if you go in any of the parks here around Vancouver, you can tell easily who's got their first, second, or third child by watching them in the on the slide. So when you have your first one, mom's at the top, dad's at the bottom watching, you know, your kid go down the slide and you know, making sure they're all protected. Number two happens, mom's no longer up there. Maybe she's <laughs> at the bottom of the slide, right? right. Number three, nobody's dad, there. Dad went to get a latte. That's it. Number yeah, three, yeah, nobody's yeah. you know, nobody cares. They fall, et cetera. I mean, right. that's 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 how, how it is. So mm -hmm. back to your question about who, you know, the most difficult they were. They all offered different things and different. It's amazing how all their DNA also are different. Mm. Um, but I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's as a kid, it's probably tougher to be the first one in line, the first one of the family, because everybody's looking and expecting a lot, etc. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. your second picks up from the first and third, etc. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's a, it's a it's a you know it's it's been very enjoyable. So I wouldn't say it was difficult. You know, just different from one kid to another. But they got involved in a lot of uh, sports. They, uh, they, they, they were pretty uh, energetic as, as kids, and mm. they, uh, you know, they played all sorts of sports and activities. So that, that was very helpful. Mm. What was the hardest period for you in terms of adjusting? Adjusting um, uh, in my personal life, you mean, Chris? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, especially around being a father. Yeah, adjusting is uh, oof, it's that, that's, that's teaching them what to do instead of doing it for them. Mm -hmm. And I still struggle with this at times. You know, uh, they have their own personality. They have their own, uh, you know, uh, passion in life, etc. So, um, yeah, some, you know, the difference sometimes is, 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 you know, more difficult for, for a father. Uh, you're obviously looking after uh, everyone with the care and attention. You know, the first boyfriends, uh, you know, buddies, etc. Uh, uh, you know, the first night that somebody came came home and, and had a little too much to drink. I mean, those are experiences mm -hmm. as fathers. Mm -hmm. You say, mm, okay, where do I need to intervene? How do I get involved there? But for the most part, it's been fantastic. Uh, not not very, very difficult. Very fortunate, again, we, it's a teamwork. So Carol is very close to our kids as well. So we, uh, we did that together, all mm. of us. So Nice. And how did you manage the first... Uh 
coming home drinking episode. Oh my God, you know, Chris, <laughs> it's funny because, you know, 16, 17 year olds shouldn't say this today and you wouldn't see this today, actually. I think our, mm. our, our children are much more responsible than we were. Uh, coming back home uh, impaired uh, mm. with a couple buddies of ours, we were going in a nightclub, which we weren't allowed to go because we were only 16. And I kid you not, it's a, it's a Saturday night and I come back home because I don't feel too good and mm. I go to bed. And um, sure enough, my mom and my aunt there co comes over and asks me a lot of questions. Chris, I came back home. It was 8.30 at night. I could have stayed outside for a few hours, but I was, that was, you know, first, first, first experience. I felt so bad. Um, so, yeah, a little too much to drink and came back. Okay. And, and uh, and that's it. But uh, but fortunately, and back then, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, driving and drinking, uh, rules, regulation, laws were not uh, were not uh, what they are today. And uh, you know, kids and teenagers took a lot of chances and a lot of bad changes uh, chances. And uh, fortunately, uh, you know, nothing happened to our uh, to our buddies and friends. Um, yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah. Good to overcome these things. Correct. Yeah. But you felt comfortable enough to go home. I felt very comfortable going back home. After a I lot said, of drinking, which is... Well, you know, I said, that's it. I mean, I don't feel great. So there was I... no shame around the experience. You, you, obviously, your parents mm. parents had set it up differently. Uh, yeah. So, you know, came back and, and, and I said, that's it. I'm going to bed. But it was 8.30 at night. I didn't think about, uh, you know, waiting whatsoever. I mean, that was a stupid experience, but... Did you know, your did your aunt and mother know you'd been drinking that night? Yes, of course. They oh. probably saw me, you know, going up the staircase and then coming okay. back. So that was that was, you know. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And they laughed. They they were laughing a lot, you know. And uh. I said, Why are they laughing? I'm in trouble and they're laughing. But I knew after you know, why they did. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. maybe I will just formally welcome Henry Blumenthal, branch director of Intact BC, to the Reliance Podcast and the Spicy Noodle Challenge, wherein we're going to consume insanely hot and uncomfortable spicy noodles prepared for by Kane. Um, and the challenge being is not to drink the milk that is within reach <laughs> and right. see who has the most at the end. But more than anything, uh, to have an opportunity to spend time talking to Henry about his experience, his life, um, your views of the world and everything else in between. And uh, so, Henry, uh, welcome. Thank you, Chris. It's a yeah. pleasure to be here with you. Um, do you like spicy food? Yeah, I do. I do actually. Uh, since we moved here, what six years ago now in uh, in Vancouver, my 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 one of my favorite food is uh, Asian spicy food. So it's uh, and we're fortunate here in Vancouver to enjoy the best of all. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do enjoy it. Yeah, we've attracted a lot of Hong Kong chefs over the years, it's right? Fantastic. To the dim sum restaurants, a lot of creativity, the seafood and West Coast flair. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Correct. Favorite dim sum place. Uh, it varies, you know, I've got a couple, a uh, couple, uh, you know, downtown Vancouver. Uh, one of my favorite, cause they're, they've got a couple places, uh, is Dynasty. And oh they, yeah, they, yeah. They're up in Burnaby where I live. They also have a couple uh, different location. And what mm -hmm. I like about the food is they prepare it in front of you. It's super nice, very tasty, uh, mm -hmm. amazing service. So, uh, you know, that's one of my favorite spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever go to Pink Pearl? Never tried it. Oh. I drive by oftentimes, but okay. never, never been there. Yes, well, it should be good, I guess. We'll put that on the list of lunch spots. We actually, should. yeah, we it's should. A, a Vancouver institution. I, Absolutely. I like Dynasty too, but Pink Pearl's got that old school cart. Okay. Right, yeah, that yeah, they roll yeah, around yeah. with the hagao and oh yeah, lobak go and all kinds of other tasty things. Yeah, yeah. I learned that dim sum in in Toronto actually when I was living in Toronto and working uh, uh, in Toronto and. And that was a great experience. One mm. of the rare experience as uh, leaders, we all got together once every month to that dim sum spot. And we were about 10, 12 around the table mm. from different groups, claims on the writing, sales, et cetera. And we got to learn a lot about each other around that table. So pretty, pretty nice way to, you know, to mingle with uh, with different leaders. So that was was that a weekly event, a monthly event? That was a monthly event, and we uh, we mm -hmm. draw at the end, and we would pay for it. But uh, it was it was fantastic. You what know, a great idea! Good quality, cheap price, mm -hmm. a fantastic service. You know, okay. good experience. Are you ready to dig in? Yeah, let's do all it. Right, man, let's all right, man. All right, all right, all right. No small forkfuls, Henry. I want to see a big fat fork. I want to see a big one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
We've got to take these babies down. All right. Pardon my reach here. Yeah, yeah. There we go. I'm with you, buddy. Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Mm-hmm. I can... I can feel this this spice here. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah, it's got a little burn. <clears throat> it's actually very nice. Hmm. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> <laughs> it is nice. It's uh, it's al- it's almost al-, al dente, but it's uh, yeah, the Woo! spices are. Woo! Oh yeah. Yeah, it's got a little afterburn to it. That's oh, okay. That's it's legit. gonna it's gonna uh-huh. be sweaty here in a few uh, a few mm-hmm. minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Beautiful. Where are these ranking in your top ten of spicy? Excuse me. <laughs> Where are these noodles ranking? Oh, in the top ten yeah. of. Um, well, mm-hmm. I say it's a good eight. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I'd say seven, eight at least. <laughs> For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you're drinking water. I heard uh, at some point if you drink water, it's just dispersing uh, the spices everywhere. So I made it. Oh, maybe... you're an expert. You did your research. You came in prepared. Yeah, rice is the secret, apparently. If you oh. take a little white rice and. Okay. Yeah. It is. Mm. It you is you have a nice glow about you right now. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. Now. It's coming up. There's <laughs> <laughs> no question. And you'll be the same, Chris, I'm sure. Yeah, no. I feel Whew. it set. I feel it set in. Um, so you're a pretty fit guy. I've. The time I've known you, you've always been a fit guy. I know you're an active skier and everything. But what's your what's your core activity? Running, running. I'm a runner, uh, okay. um, and I, you know, a, a runner. Running is part of my life. Let's put it this way. So mm-hmm. I've uh, actually I just completed my 42nd marathon uh, two days ago. Uh, oh my god! Congratulations, uh, man. Thank you. And uh, uh, ironically, it was my my second win in a row because I was by myself. So I organized myself a, a full marathon. <laughs> so you came in, in, you came in first out of out of one out of one yes. so it's, it's because of covid you know it's it difficult to find a race mm-hmm. and i uh, you know it, it's part of my life uh, chris i've been running for many years now uh, if i don't go out my my kids will send me out to mm-hmm. to go out for a run cuz uh, they say hey dad you need the energy you need to go out and relax you're mm-hmm. you're a bit too tense and and hyper here yeah so i've been uh, running regularly for Many years, yeah. Completed over forty uh, full marathons now, and you know half. I, I would I would probably guess that uh, it's over, you know, six hundred and fifty now. Because every time I train for a marathon, there's fifteen to twenty long runs uh, training on Sundays. So when you start piling those up, it's it makes a lot of distance. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's good. You know, I love running. I love uh, skiing and hiking as well. We do some hiking. Uh, family uh, mm. you know i've got you know, one daughter or well two of our daughters are actually hiking a lot with us um so it's great you know i i, I like to stay fit and and go outside and and um it's important to balance you know your work your life and and be fit you know heart and and um you know sleep better uh, overall feel better okay and do you are there particular running coaches or people you follow on social media or things that you read to kind of inspire you or to get Yeah, I follow a number of uh, people on the, if you look at my Twitter account, most, uh, most, I would say half of my uh, people that I follow are uh, athletes Mm. Um, and a lot of them are uh, runners. I just like the way, you know, they describe some of their runs. Um, They all have mottos and, you know, uh, inspiration quotes, you know, and uh, Mm. one guy I really like uh, following is John Stanton. I don't know if you know John Stanton. No. Uh, the running room so he's the founder of oh, the okay. running room and he created this many many years ago opening one store to help the local community to become runners and now it's uh, there must be 100 stores uh, across across america i guess all over america and he's managed to you know do very very well so he does you know you can buy shoes and equipment there mm. but the most uh, interesting part about the running room is uh, you 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 can uh, be part of a running team. So if you're in for your first 10k or 5k or half marathon or full marathon, you can mm-hmm. follow groups that are running about mm-hmm. the same level as you, and it's very motivating. So John mm-hmm. uh, uh, and he attends a lot of marathons himself because he's one of the sponsors. But I've I've met him many many times in Ottawa when I was running the Ottawa Marathon, 
And he's always got the great quotes. Um, so yeah, I, I love following uh, John Stanton. The other guy I follow for for I've been following for a while is uh, a, a Montrealer called Bruno Wallet. <laughs> And uh, you can you can uh, watch uh, Bruno. Uh, I think his site is Bruno uh, or Bruno Wallet.ca. We can we can give the the full address. And Bruno is a uh, professional um, coach mentor, and he worked many many years, and he continues to uh, work with athletes and you know very uh, Olympians. Mm. And he's so good, you know. He's uh, he's down to earth, uh, nice techniques, very inspirational, and to keep things simple. The thing I learned the most about uh, Bruno is uh, what he referred is his technique as PCL in French, petit constant en temps. So the bad translation is like small, constant in a long period of time. So when you're running, or if you're working, or if you're developing a skills hiking, sports, uh, work, any type of activities you do. You have to do it small steps at a time, you know, one step at a time. Do this cons consistently for a long period of time. That's how you become much better. And I, you apply this. I was running on the weekend, as I mentioned. And when you hit the wall at 35, 36 kilometer, you keep this in mind saying, okay, small, constant, long period, relax, you do it. You're gonna do this. It helps a lot. So Bruno Wallet is is quite quite amazing, and he was sharing stories about athletes he supported and he coached. Well, you know those guys are very resilient. You know he mm. was he was helping a, a an Olympian uh, diver, and uh, he says Henry, if you think as a leader in your organization you're co you're over coaching your people, guess what? That diver, every single dive, his coach was by the pool side and told him, watch this elbow, watch this piece, etc. Every single dive. He could do hundreds in a session every single time. So again, PCL, that, that, that technique is, is pretty useful. That makes a lot of sense in terms of breaking it down into bite-sized pieces. And then, you know, those are smaller goals, more attainable goals, as opposed to Tomorrow I'm going to run a marathon. Correct, correct. <laughs> yeah, one at a time. The toughest, yeah. uh, the toughest uh, kilometer as a runner is the first one, you know. And uh, you know, once you get the first, you'll try a second one, etc. And, mm. and you build this up over time. You can't become a, a marathon runner overnight. You mm. you will not. Or if you do, you will suffer for two weeks after. Um, so it's you know small steps, mm. constantly on a long period of time is the secret. So you must have experimented with a vast number of shoes and brands and sort yes. of, you know, what's your comfort level? What type of shoe do you like? Are you sock, no sock, barefoot? Yeah, yeah good question. I, I, I tried pretty much uh, all models until I really got comfortable with the one that I've been using now for, you know, 10 years, over mm -hmm. 10 years. Um, it's, and it, it's, it's, a, it's a brand that's got now its 25th version of the same shoe. So that's that's mm -hmm. been my my uh, runners for for a long period of time, and they're traditional runners, so pretty pretty stable, fluffy. I tried the minimalist uh, shoe you, they call, yeah, you know, very flat, yeah, and yeah. that gave me uh, that that gave me uh, you know some back uh, back challenges. I did try to run uh, barefoot. At some point, it only lasted about 100 meters. That wasn't very comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Although, although uh, Chris, I never wear shoes and socks on weekends and at night. I, I, I always, I am always barefoot, uh, outside, inside, etc. I, I love it. But, uh, but running on a traditional shoe uh, runner, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. once you know your model, I mean, it's easy, and you know, you just get the comfort. I'm with you. I, I typically run trails so to me the idea of running barefoot was never really an option because i just didn't want to be pulling thorns yeah, branches exactly. and rocks out of my feet uh, at the end of it but although some some do it right yeah, yeah. some do it okay chris we should uh, take okay another bite i there. agree it's, oh yeah it's well, been look, a while now. look who's look who's yeah. driving the bus on that that's, that's a contest I yes thought, right? it is it is but i'm i'm, I'm debating if uh, we have the same the same type of pasta or tape and noodles in the bowl mm. here mine's just ketchup henry Mm -hmm. No, there's nothing spicy here. Mm -hmm. It's all a ruse. Mm -hmm. mm. So, we're coming out of COVID. Yeah. You and I are both double vaccinated now. We're happy to sit here, mm -hmm. talk without a mask, feel comfortable to see each other again for the first time in a long time. Absolutely. Um, where are you at with it now, do you think, personally? On the COVID piece? Yeah. 
I think you know there's there's <clears throat> good learnings about about the the COVID. Um, I'm an optimistic uh, person by nature, so I, I try to see you know things uh, mm. positively, uh, even in, in when the tough gets going. You know, I, I consider myself uh, pretty resilient. Um, what COVID brought to to us, to our family, you know, uh, with a step back in many years from now, we'll say, you know what, there were good times because we got together a lot more around dinner, about mm. you know breakfast together, hiking mm-hmm. together, etc. Uh, as a family, um, and it, it brought you know proximity to, to to family, reaching out to family members, etc. So that was that was that that to me was was something positive out of this. Uh, but there were also challenges with COVID. You know, um, uh, employment was a challenge uh, for for many people. We we're fortunate to be in this industry where it's you mm-hmm. know it's it's. Uh, it's a, jo- a joy to be supporting Canadians throughout the pandemic and and uh, and as essential services. Um, so that's good news. But when I look at the, the you know my my children studying from distance, uh, you know Karin just graduated from SFU last week and she had a virtual uh, graduation, which is not the best. You know, uh, you know I wish she was able to celebrate with her colleagues, hug each other, and all this, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like 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 human being do. So I, I do miss the interactions, you know, the hugging, the, you know, get together uh, around a beer at, uh, you know, somewhere, yeah. go to a hockey game, you know, go to a concert. So yeah. uh, this, this has been, uh, has been difficult. Um, also, you know, while, while uh, at Intact, we've done amazing in, in setting up people working from home uh, within the first few days, 95% of every, uh, uh, every staff was actually being able to work from home. And people did a, a, a great job in, in keeping connected with brokers and, and clients. At the same time, I felt pressure there. I felt that some mm. some people didn't think about themselves enough. You know, they logged in early in the morning, logged out late at night, work weekends, etc., which wasn't great. Um, okay. And I I, 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 I feel strong that. Uh, many needed a better work-life balance at some point, and we we had to, you know, step in and and say, guys, you know, Chris, take it easy. Tomorrow, I don't want to see you logged in. You've mm-hmm. been on your system for the last you know couple of weeks, nonstop, mm-hmm. etc. So, um, so yeah, I remember COVID as a very stressful experience for many many people, uh, many businesses as well. Not. Uh, uh, not the easiest time of all, uh, for sure. We supported millions of Canadians during that difficult period of time, um, and um, and continue to do so. So, uh, yeah, tough, tough experience overall. Yeah, um, I'm sure with a step back again, uh, many years from now, we'll see this as uh, not as bad as we see it today, but certainly is a, a big hit, tremendous hit on everybody's. Uh, everybody uh you know in the world i guess yeah at, at least the overall psychology of course of, and now you see time. things reopening we see uh, yeah. we see uh businesses reopening we see people not having to wear a mask and it kind of feel awkward now you go in mm-hmm. um uh, so it'll take time but i'm very optimistic we'll get back i wouldn't say uh all normal or what it used to be but i think we'll 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 be back to to something very similar. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, with a lot of learnings in place, right? Absolutely. I mean, the fact that uh, the flu season was all but eliminated, I think there's some learning to take from that. Correct. Absolutely. Right? So. So. Yeah. So it, it kind of brings us around to getting back to the beginnings of things, Henry, which is starts with uh, maybe we'll take a bite of noodles and talk about how you got into an insurance. <laughs> sure, what, sure, what, sure, like sure. Like what? Okay. What? What did you do wrong, man? You, you're. You know, you're bright, you're educated, you probably had lots of options. Mm -hmm. Mm. We don't feel the spice anymore, eh? Mm. I think that, that, yeah, we'll see. Mm -hmm. So, um... So, grew up in the in Quebec, in Montreal. I studied actual science. I, uh, I'm not an actuary, but I Mm. uh, was working in one of... um, what well, we called them a direct broker, you know, um, which was uh, Melochmonics back then as a student and uh, started in claims. And uh, 
I continued on and I said, you know what, this is, I like the action, the frontline action and all this. And I continued and learned the business from scratch, I guess, um, from a uh, adjuster to, uh, to, uh, to who I am today. So many different opportunities. Um, and um, always uh, eager to learn new things and uh, always eager to open doors. And one of my philosophy in life is if the door opens a little bit, get in. You know, stuck your foot in so it doesn't close mm. and just get in. So I, I did earlier in my career, I did, you know, some uh, claim adjusting. And then somebody asked me, in the, you know, um, if... Um, and actually, a friend of mine who was also an adjuster, at some point we were, looking, we were at, you know, examining claims and we said, you know what, there's something wrong with that picture. We're sending IAs all the time, et cetera. Why don't we start our field adjusting team ourselves? And we, we made a proposal and the proposal was accepted. So we created field adjusting for that uh, firm and then, you know, move on to different type of roles. So. Mm. Um, fortunate to be surrounded by great people, um, but also curious to learn new things. And I'm a risk taker in life, um, not the mm -hmm. you know as a, a significant like bad risk taker, but I like touching different things. I need to move on. I, two, three, four years usually in a position. Uh, <clears throat> time for me to to move to something else. So I've done, I've done, I've, I've led some teams uh, in Montreal. And then one day, uh, Chris, I, uh, Carol and I went to, uh, to uh, here. We came here uh, on the West Coast. We did the West Coast Trail. And I came back. So it was primarily for vacation, nothing to do with business. Only vacation. Uh -huh. And uh, that was in the, uh, I guess, that was probably the early 90s. And uh, when we first, came, first trip to BC, first ever trip to BC. Wow! So we did okay. uh, some some uh, Rockies, and then we did the West Coast Trail with a you know, couple of our friends. Did you drive or fly? We flew in. We flew okay. in Calgary, drove to uh, Vancouver, did the West Coast Trail, and then mm. uh, flew back from uh, from uh, Vancouver or Calgary. Uh, but once you step in the BC uh, and you see the surroundings and the Rockies, I said, Oh my God, this, this is amazing. This mm -hmm. is, this is, this is a dream. So a couple, couple months after we came back, I asked uh, my boss, I said, you know, uh, Ivan, do you, uh, I, you know, cause we were coast, almost coast to coast. We were pretty much coast to coast. And I said, if there's opportunities out West, put my name in, I'd be interested. And she says, are you sure? She said, yeah, yeah. I said, yeah, I am sure. You know, if there's, and I was thinking about Calgary. We had a Calgary office back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, and two weeks later, she followed up. She said, are you serious about, you know, potentially moving? And I said, yes, I am. And she says, well, put something in writing, and which I did, and uh, sent her my note. And uh, sure enough, a day or two after, somebody knocked at my door. It, it, it was one of uh, the executives there. And asked me to make a move uh, west, but the problem is it was it wasn't that western. It was like West Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> west is all relative. It's all relative. And yeah. I said Toronto, and and the answer was well, Henry, we we need someone. We need someone there. You know, uh, claims wise, we we're organized, but there's a lot of volume, and we need we need some leadership. We need some help. And would you consider it? And I said, well, I was thinking West, but not Toronto. Yeah. So anyway, so I, I, I said, L listen, let me at least see the office, see what it's like. And, and Chris, when I stepped in the office, I said, oh, my God, there's good work to be done here. Hmm. There's good people, but I don't think it's organized the way I would organize, you know, a claim operation. So I came back and I said, yes, I'll, 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 we'll do it. You know, Kala and I didn't have kids then. And we said, uh, let's pack it in. We sold our place. We said, we'll give you two years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up being in Toronto for almost 10 years. And we had wow. our three kids in Toronto. So that's another element for me that's important. Is, you know, again, uh, uh, you never know in taking a, a, a mandate where you're, you'll end up after. You know, mm -hmm. There's always great learning. You know, Toronto was an amazing city. You know, great people. And I got to, you know, from my career and Carol's career, we're you know, it was fantastic because we learned new things. I, I learned accident benefit, bodily injuries. Uh, well, I mean, I've often heard it said, Henry, that if you want to learn the insurance business, claims is the foundation by which to absolutely. do it. And I, I would agree with that. Yeah, the common sense. The, I mean, you're the, actually interpreting and applying the wordings. and Correct. 
Yeah. So it's it's on the front lines and helping people directly. Yes, and that's that's yeah. a big that's a big difference. You know the common sense things about do's and don't about you know mm. is this covered not covered finding coverage, helping people out helping people out makes makes a huge difference, mm-hmm. and uh, all, all the respect and the uh, interactions with people. So uh, and then you know I developed you know different skills because they've asked you know I've and I did ask myself you know. Uh, you know, different mandates. So I got to be involved in systems management and uh, in underwriting and different uh, in different areas. So mm. really help out and uh, was f- a fantastic experience in Toronto. Wow. What do you think was your greatest learning there? Uh, the learning for me there is, uh, you know, uh, don't underestimate what you're capable of because uh, and I've uh, always been very nervous to take on new challenges. Mm. When somebody asked me, well, Henry, I, I think you'd be good at, uh, at uh, leading, uh, you know, uh, Eastern Canada, for example, the Atlantic provinces, which I, I had no idea, or, or systems management. Mm. The first day you start, you said, what am I going to do here? What have I said here? Did and you did you feel like you had imposter syndrome? Do you know that abso- term? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Interesting. You say, I'm not competent for this position or i don't think i am mm. uh, however there are senior people there with experience that trust me and say you know what trust us you'll do fine uh of course you know making mistake I, I continue to make mistakes today but you you get great learnings from mistakes uh as long as you don't do it you know two three times but um well the the dalai lama says one of his rules of life is that when you lose do not lose the lesson correct you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. So. And uh, yeah, my daughter, I, I, she took that from someone else. But that's, and one, one day she said, uh, Papa, you know, uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you learn. Yeah. Um, so uh, <laughs> yeah. and that's a very good learning for me. That's a good so way So did many, it. many different things. And mm. that's the biggest learning. And, mm. and, and Chris, don't underestimate also the cultural learning in being a Francophone from Montreal, mm. moving to Toronto. Uh, surrounded and and it was it was actually uh, uh, right after the second referendum and, Ooh. and we were contentious and I, times yeah we were wondering about you know being francophones going to Toronto quite the contrary we were welcome like any uh, you know uh, diverse uh, group in mm. in Toronto and it was such a nice city to be in oh I'm really glad to hear that such a nice city yeah um, so we have it good in Canada to be honest it's, yeah. it's a fantastic country. It is amazing that way. And, uh, you know, so that I wonder how much, you know, when you're looking out at the future and us having it good in Canada, are the challenges for us in the industry going to be any different than anywhere else? So what do you see those as being? Well, I, I, I and maybe think, another, well, yeah, another, sure, another hit, another hit. Are on you noodles. almost done, Chris? Because I'm all, I would say I'm halfway done. Yeah, I'm about halfway through. Okay. Okay. That's good. Sorry about my. No, no. Ready for another hit of heat. Mm-hmm. Not very pretty, I have to say, but. Mm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Very nice, thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, some of the challenges will be uh, will continue to to face in, in the coming years, and maybe more rapidly than what we've been facing so far. There's no question, and. You know, today as we speak, as as you know, there's a lot of wildfires happening in BC and, and pretty much everywhere. And there's a hailstorm that uh, just happened last uh, week and started in the, in Alberta. So the climate change adaptation will continue to be a massive challenge for our industry and for us as humans. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, there's more and more storms. There's more and more severe. Uh, we need to be helping Canadians to be you know better prepared. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> You know, I cannot imagine, Chris, you know, after going through a COVID and, and all the major catastrophes, if, if something like a quake, the big one happens here in, in BC. Um, so those are things to continue watching and watching, you know, with, with I would say with more discipline. We need to make sure it, every stakeholder is, is, is taking this very seriously. Um, so, so uh, climate change and climate change adaptation will continue to be a huge, huge uh, challenge for for us as human as and us as a, as insurance as an insurance industry. Um, I mean, how do you how do you even underwrite the future of that? 
Yeah. So, so, so there's there's a lot of experts. We invest uh, at Intac <clears throat> massively in those researchers. Uh, uh, you know, making sure we understand what's coming up because um, mm -hmm. you know, the current trend uh, will only accelerate itself. And uh, while there's solutions, um, you know, are those solutions being implemented at the speed that's required? That to me remains uh, remains a big challenge. Are we uh, taking uh, those changes seriously enough? Um, Do you mean as consumers, as, as a country, con as a all of the above? Okay. You know, and, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so so that that has to continue. That we need to to have the appropriate plan in place, mm -hmm. and uh, not only on paper, but you know, make it make it real. You know, making sure we have more resilience pretty much everywhere. Making sure we build. Uh, in areas that are not prone to flood, uh, that we use material that makes sense, mm -hmm. that are more protective, mm -hmm. um, that uh, we uh, continue to work with governments in improving uh, what what we do and, and the emission we, we produce and all that. So there's massive work. Um, I hear a lot of elements of PCL. Yes, correct. You're absolutely right. It doesn't, it won't happen overnight. Mm -hmm. it, it has to be uh, uh, collective with uh, with the right amount of work and uh, you know I'm an optimistic again by by trade um, but I'm, I'm looking at my my kids generation will mm. will they see it worse uh, if, uh, you know how will that stop and how can we better control this so they enjoy what you and I have been enjoying for mm -hmm. for uh, you know in my case for the last 55 years. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, and, and generally speaking, Henry, um, I remember being in my 20s and, you know, all the change and things I wanted, I wanted now, per, immediate. Yes. And, you know, I mean, as a father, how do you manage the expectations of that generation? Because we have the benefit of wisdom, understanding that human behavioral change does take time and has to be incremental and needs to be multi-leveled. You know, just as right. you talked about, how do you run a marathon? I mean, this is, as much as everyone wants it to be a sprint, to get the whole globe on board, I think, is more of a marathon. What about you? Yeah, no, you're right. Uh, it's it's got to be global. It's got to be it's got to be uh, holistic. And uh, like you and I uh, are only one one small piece into this mm -hmm. equation, but we do we need to do our part as well. Mm -hmm. So this definitely will will continue to be a, a massive challenge. Um, when you look at opportunities, I see them more as opportunities and then challenges. Uh, uh, the digital world mm -hmm. is uh, is helping your business to be, be better, to be faster, to be more efficient and more mm -hmm. simple for consumers. Mm -hmm. And that will continue to happen. I mean, look at the way uh, and during COVID, all, all your work has changed in terms of ordering online, purchasing online, mm -hmm. getting some uh, application helping you out, you know, every single day, et cetera. So, you know, that... Uh, that uh, will continue to accelerate. So, uh, and businesses like, like, yeah, you know, our broker partner businesses need to see this as a lever, not as a threat. Uh, the moment you see this as a threat, you kind of become a bit stalled and, and, and slowed down. You, mm. you see this as opportunities and, 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 um, Wise words, Henry. Those are wise words. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah it, 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 it's, uh, it's much easier. I remember mm. about 10 years ago, uh, I was uh, speaking in uh, one of the industry function, and I was the uh, president of the CADD in Quebec, which is the direct distribution, you know, industry group there. And I remember uh, talking about, you know, speed. And uh, ten years ago, the big shift was you could purchase a car and get insurance within a couple days. You know, maybe three days, four days. <laughs> couple days as opposed to a couple <laughs> weeks if, if you remember right? uh -huh. and in today's environment you can yeah. do it all online yeah within hours probably yes. yeah. so it's going it's going fast um so that will continue to, to happen if i look at bc specifically with the recent icbc changes mm -hmm. and the way we uh, model the uh, the auto uh, business um that's going to transform uh, many of our broker partners um, in, in, in the sense that the walking business, which was the business that existed in BC for you know, the last 40 years, mm -hmm. uh, is, is going to migrate into more of a direct consumer model or mm -hmm. more of a telephone or online model 
which will change the way people renew their policy or buy their policies. Um, and that will be a big shift. And when there's already a current um, impact if you, re if, if you look at what the government did during COVID. So there'll be a race in my mind for our broker partners to really create stickiness in their book of business and making sure clients don't start shopping around. Mm -hmm. And the moment uh, brokers may invest in marketing, may invest in attracting new business, that will put additional pressure on traditional brokerages, uh, mm -hmm. uh, walking business. So to me, that's, that's, that's an important uh, shift that will happen in the next, uh, in the next year, two years. So uh, let me ask you a question, Henry. I think between that change and uh, COVID and sort of the, the future of whatever the work model is, is, are you, is it a hybrid model where you're in the office every day, not in the day? Do you see the footprint of the brokerage industry decreasing? Uh, you know, Physically. I, I would say there's going to be a, a shift in how people w uh, prefer doing business because mm. it was, if, if, uh, if you look at the past, it was mandatory regulated that you walk in every year to renew mm -hmm. your product. Uh, that changing will, will, uh, will, will create a, a different needs, different habits for people. Mm -hmm. And when, when I look at my own uh, family here, I'm pretty sure out of my three young adults, one would by far prefer going to the corner office to renew, buy insurance, etc. She prefers face-to-face -face connectivity. Interesting. The second one, I can guarantee you, it's, it would be online because, you know, and if she looks at me, says, Papa, I mean, like, where, where, where can I text this or, or something? Mm -hmm. that's, that's their preferred mode of. And then the third one may be an hybrid system, but these will create changes in, in our industry for auto insurance for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've shared many times, I've been in this province for six years. And um, one disappointment I had uh, about our industry, it, I walked in this office which was prox you know, proximity and convenience for me to renew my ICBC or buy my, my auto insurance. And despite the fact that one of the car was used for business 30% of the time, my wife's, you know, for 30% mm -hmm. of her time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, knowing that I live here in Burnaby uh, on, on such and such a street, I was always disappointed. Nobody asked me about my home insurance when I got in to renew my ICBC. Oh. Nobody asked me about Kara's business, you know, while she uses the car 30% of the time, etc. A, a loss so the, cross sell. The upsell cross sell opportunities, mm -hmm. this will shift. So companies that will be very successful, you're one of them, mm -hmm. is the one that will create those sticking point or making sure you add value by offering different products by making sure henry why don't have uh, have your home with us we'll mm -hmm. give you additional mm -hmm. discount ease of you know uh, service and all that so that that to me will be shifting uh, significantly so some 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 brokers and some operators are doing very well today mm -hmm. i would say most of them are not used to this uh, model and it, we're in for a big change mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a fair assessment. I mean, I feel fortunate at Reliance because, as you we were talking earlier, I mean, walk-in auto is less than 1% of our revenue, so we certainly don't have the same exposure as some of our, our peers in the industry. Correct. Um, <clears throat> so you have seen a lot of different products over the years, uh, and uh, you've certainly seen a lot of project changes and system changes at Intact. Yes. Um, what's been the most innovative product you've been involved with there? Oh. Things. That's and, a, and maybe we have another hit of the. Yeah, sure. Let's do uh, this. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do this now. Yep. Mm. I hope nobody's zooming on my uh, mm. eating. I think my mouth is, has built up some cast iron. Oh, it's yeah. not a. Uh, it's hot, but it's not as hot as the first few bites. Mm. How are you finding it? I'm with you, but uh, once you start speaking, though, it comes back a mm -hmm. little bit. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Mocha. <laughs> it's starting to be hot. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, where were we, uh, Chris? We mm. um, innovation. Yes, innovation intact and products. Yes. So, um, absolutely, as you know, intact is um, is a multi facet uh, group. Um, mm -hmm. We've got so many different offers. You know, traditional broker distribution. We have you know uh, direct to consumer distribution as well, and so. Uh, Clearly, when I look at the past and the history, you know, being uh, pioneers in offering quick quotes and online quotes mm -hmm. and buy online, etc., uh, is is it was definitely one of the um, highlights of uh, of Intac, uh, in the past uh, in the past uh, many years now, probably decades now since we started some online uh, quoting and and, and purchasing. Uh, one of the most uh, impressing, impressive one was the uh, UBI, so the telematics that, uh, mm -hmm. um, and the. Uh, so maybe just explain what that is. Yeah, so telematics is telematics is is now on your mobile, so it's an application that follows your driving skills. So mm -hmm. it's uh, UBI, user base insurance, mm -hmm. and basically uh, it helps you in getting uh, discounts or adjusting the premium based mm -hmm. on your driving habit. And the good news about this is also helping you as a driver to become a better driver. And uh, uh, the technology is just fantastic. There's there's a lot of things we you know uh, uh, harsh braking, sharp turning. Uh, have you used your phone or not? Uh, distracted the driving and all that. And all of those, uh, the intelligence behind this, the modeling, the pricing is all done internally. So we've got. Uh, as so it's you a proprietary algorithm. Correct. And, and is this through a separate piece, or is this an app in the phone? It's an app, so you can get the. So it's relying on the phone's gyroscope and other internal sensors. Exactly. There's there's, there's many different sensors on the phone. Right. So you, all you need to do is is get your mobile in your car. Don't touch it anymore, and mm -hmm. it does the trick. And we know mm -hmm. who's driving, who's not driving, by the simple fact on how the phone. Thank you. Yeah, that's Thank very you. well uh, appreciated. So depending on how the phone is actually going in the car, we 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 can we we can tell who's the driver, who's not, and uh, it's it's quite powerful. It's it's uh, it's a voluntary. You know, you 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 uh, you activate it if you want, and um, it's uh, the science behind is just fantastic. There's so many uh, wow things uh, built in the uh, algorithm, and as you know, uh, Chris, and maybe that's that's. Um, We've we've shared that already. We probably have a, over a few hundred actuaries at Intact now, with the size of our organization, and uh, we've also created an Intact lab. Uh, I would say close to ten years ago now, at least five years. Uh, Intact lab, where we have uh, scientists helping us with data and how to manage and uh, revolutionize uh, rating and and. Um, segmentation so it's 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 all good it's and it's mm. all ours and it's it's just fantastic to see uh, how the, how, you know how uh, those experts are working together so so innovation is 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 part of our dna uh we uh, wanted to uh, and we have uh, now an office in uh, in asia in hong kong to uh, develop some of that uh, technology and ai and uh, we have we have a, a couple areas, uh, Toronto, Montreal, where we have experts helping us out on that uh, on that front. Uh, we wanted, to, you know, we've made it clear we want to be the the best insurance AI shop in the world, hmm. and um, we're working very very hard to find different that is solutions a very to helping Canadians. And that's ambitious. It I'm, is. I'm glad that's coming out of Canada. Yes, absolutely. So uh, so we're very proud. It's it's a fantastic group. Mm. And we iterate a lot, you know, we, when we implement, so I, if I look at UBI or telematics, or if mm -hmm. I look at our quick quote suites or online quoting suites, we iterate very, very rapidly. So um, we have so much intelligence on where we're successful, where we can tweak further to attract more, to mm -hmm. be uh, a simplified uh, quoting process our telematics, et cetera. So we, that's what we do. We implement and then we iterate a lot. How many employees is intact now? Oh my God. Uh, I, I could be wrong with the numbers, but uh, with the RSA re latest acquisition, we're mm -hmm. looking at, and I, I'm, I'm going to have to be careful with the numbers, but sure. I, I'm, I think it's 14,000 people now. Yeah. Wow. Uh, around the globe. We, uh, 
we are, yes, a lot of professionals. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. And how do you, what is your preferred way of communicating with your team? Uh, that's a, you know, I, I try to vary and, and communicate with my team. Uh, you know, I like face-to-face interaction as much as possible. That's mm-hmm. another part of COVID that's kind of uh, irritate me a bit is we don't have as many face-to-face interactions. So that, that would be my preferred way to communicate at live, face-to-face. Now we do this virtually, which is fine. Um, but I miss the interaction in the office. I miss the coffee chats mm-hmm. uh, that we have with people uh, everywhere. And, uh, and, and, you know, sometimes I use, uh, I use written, written communications. I, uh, I try to work with my team, not push things down necessarily. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. you have, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. you have to call the shot. But most times we, I have a very diverse team, Chris. So when it comes to new project ideas, how to uh, improve, modify something. Mm-hmm. I consult with them, and together we make the we make the calls. We make those changes. We collaborative empowerment. Absolutely, yeah. It's that's, very that's, very strong. Yeah, uh, it's 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 part of our DNA. Uh, at Intact. Sure, sure. Um, so and and leveraging talent is very important for me. So I have got currently in BC, I've got three directors that are very mm-hmm. very diverse. And they offer each offer something very unique. So we leverage, you know. Uh, Who are your key directors, Henry? Uh, Steve Otwell in business oh, yes. development, yeah, yeah. and Katie Thomas yes, in commercial yes. lines, oh, and Sebastian E in ah, personal lines. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the four of us, when we get together on 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 working on the scheduling, on on what's next, on uh, making the appropriate changes mm. to be more successful, um, we work very well together. That's a strong team. Very fortunate. Team. Very fortunate. Yeah, yeah. Well, they're also, uh, I think, a product of the person that's bringing them all together, right? I, I mean, don't underestimate the leadership uh, quality on that. Yeah, but you know, once you know everybody's role, uh, Chris, and, and, and to me, uh, and it's one of our uh, company value, respect and integrity, uh, they're, they're key elements for us. And when you keep the focus on the client as well, it, those, those become fairly easy to 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 make once you got the right team for sure correct but i mean it takes a while to build it i don't think it's i don't think running a, a you know a team in business is any different than running a team in sports i mean you you build that team you get to know each other you understand where to best set someone up for the pass and someone for the block and correct right yes. uh, and that's another challenge of our business as you know our industry yeah. uh, we're always looking for talent and uh, when we get great talent, then they, you know, they stay, they learn, they mm-hmm. develop, and mm-hmm. then they move and progress and mm-hmm. be promoted. And mm-hmm. so there are nice challenges to have, nice problems to have. I always mm-hmm. said, guys, when you look at the internal turnover, they're nice problems. I love it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, important to, to really work on succession, important to, for our leaders to develop talent, mm-hmm. uh, you know, uh, rather than being there for technical reasons. A good combination of technical technical skills and people leadership is is what what drives the the numbers up. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that uh, that clearly seems to be something emanated from the top of the organization. I mean, Charles has always come across as a very approachable, down to earth. You know, same thing with Louis. Absolutely. I mean, that's some really uh, exceptional leadership. Yes, and they're very strong technically in what they do, but mm-hmm. they know everything, and they know people, and they mm. know the impact. And uh, when I look at the, the decision, the big decisions we've made in the last uh, few years, they're respectful. They uh, they're considerate for 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 Canadians and for you no know, you no know, North America and and and. Um, yeah, I'm very fortunate to be part of this amazing organization. And shout to your point, and we are amazing, amazing leaders. Yeah, I remember being um, <clears throat> at an Intact event and sitting beside Charles one time, and I asked him, I said, what, what is one of the most important qualities of your direct reports? And he's, he instantly was just, they have to like people. Correct. You know, uh, and I guess the, that was his way of saying they have to care about the people that they're working with. It's a business. It's a people business. We've yeah. got. We're running a, a, a people business, and yes, we have, we have actual science behind. We have, mm. you know, uh, a lot of talented individual everywhere in the underwriting and claims and in and in, uh, in legal and in, in corporate offices. But but the caring for people and wanting to make a difference for people is what 
is driving us uh, forward. There's no question about that. Is that part of what inspired Intact to, to give an additional day off in May? Yeah, that was a what, very what, good... What, what's that all about? That was... A, and you know, I, I, I'm the first one who, who was happy about this, uh, but but uh, you know what? Uh, the um, To my earlier point about the COVID and the impact on people, mm-hmm. we came to realize our people were so dedicated, they didn't balance work and life enough in our in our mind we we kind of felt a fatigue with our with our troops um very dedicated people working very hard but at some point guys take a break you know think about yourselves Mm. take some day off and it's difficult to go on vacation when everything's closed it's Mm -hmm, difficult in mm -hmm. british columbia anywhere in canada to you can't travel you you can you you know everything is pretty much shut down Mm -hmm. But please take a day off. So we've encouraged people and we said, let's make this fun. You know, there's, there's yeah, put yourself on social media with a clip of what you're doing that day. Um, but but please take your day off, sign off, go out and uh, just take an extra day in May. So that was that was pretty well done. Nice. I'm sure that was very well received. It was. It was. You know, People appreciated it. You know, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's not something you see coming out of a 14,000 person organization right. is, hey, have some more time off. So, yes. But we felt, we felt the fatigue, you know, people work hard. And at some point as leaders, we need to step in and say, guys, that's enough. You know, take, take the day off in me, mm. take an extra day in me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, Henry, we've, we've talked about a lot of different aspects um, of your career, but, you know, this is not your first time being interviewed in media or speaking as an expert on the industry. Could you tell us a little more about, about, about that? Well, Chrissy, that, that came from ac- by accident, actually, and I, I can maybe share that anecdote. And that, that, those were my days in Toronto, and I was leading a claims operation in Toronto. And, mm-hmm. and I remember as if it was yesterday, our, our communication guy, Antoine, came over and running at me and says, Henry, we need help. I need help because we're going on, uh, on radio uh, prime time today on this claim issue. And, uh, and uh, I knew the file because it was one of my adjuster's file and uh, pretty Tough story. It was. It wasn't an easy uh, case, and then I had Chris. Everything. There was a, you know, uh, a fire with with unrelated damage, and you know, replacement cost was an issue, and and insurance to value was another issue, etc. So it wasn't. Mm. It wasn't the easiest file. It was actually quite complicated. And um, and Antoine says, "Well, okay. So if the journalist asked me this and that, and you know, and and after a little while, I said, Antoine, you want me to do it?" You didn't, says, so you weren't the least bit concerned about being trapped in any conversation. About no, because I, I, I uh, well, I, I thought then I knew uh, the. End, I obviously knew the file very well. Right. And uh, and and it was it wasn't complicated for me technically to explain. Okay. You know when you re- explain replacement costs with the obligation to replace and sure and uh, insurance to value and all this, there those are not that complex and there's ways to to express it and ways to say it. So I was trying my best to help Antoine, but I could see in Antoine's eyes. I said, Antoine, you want me to do this interview? And he says, Well, you're not trained. I said, Give me quick coaching. I'll, I'll help you out because yeah, I you know. So Antoine coached me a little bit. It, we took maybe half an hour and, you know, the do's and don'ts and maybe be mm-hmm. careful with this, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and uh, obviously very nervous about making the call. But Chris, that was such a great experience for me. And apparently, according to Antoine, it went very, very well. Mm-hmm. And actually, the journalist thanked me at the end, you know, because uh, the angle they took at the end was, well, thank you so much, Henry, because you've educated a lot of people on this and... So the, ter- the, the story that used to be uh, almost like uh, you guys and claims are tough turned out to be you guys actually you've done a lot here and it's an extra reason everyone to making sure you know your contracts to making sure you are protected against this etc. So make the right decisions when it comes to insurance, speak to your broker, speak to your professional, all of that. And then Antoine said, well, that was so good. You should, you should. We'll train you, and you'll, you'll become one of our spokespersons. So I became the spokesperson for that group for many, many years, and mm. and and the the learning for me on this one was, you know, again, take taking a risk 
can always put you in a different spot um, and and very enjoyable one. So, um, yeah, so don't be afraid to volunteer or raise your hand if there's an opportunity that comes up um, because you never know uh, the type of learning you're going to get from this. So uh, so I, I loved it, although it was a terrible experience, very tough experience for me. I was sweating. Mm. It was tough, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the end, I said, you know what? I've accomplished something. I've helped out people to understand the do's and don'ts or what we should be focusing on, etc. And I, I became a spokesperson for their, for the group then. And uh, yeah, still enjoy it. What, what's been the most challenging experience of your career? In my career? Yeah, like maybe single number one. And I'm just kind of firing some random questions at you now. Yeah, the, 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 the biggest challenge probably is balancing everything out. I consider myself a generalist. Uh, more than a specialist, okay. right? So uh, when you lead people, the balance between uh, being nice, being efficient, mm. uh, being mm -hmm. um, you know having simplified uh, process, um, um, improving your engagement everywhere. So it's balancing this out to me. That still is is probably the biggest challenge. Um, you know, it's easy. Like to, as a, as your own professional. Yes. I see. You know, as a person, as a leader. Yeah. In making sure, uh, am I doing too much of this? Not enough of this one. Okay. Am I too focused on, on results? Not enough on people? Should mm. I balance this better, et cetera? I'm exaggerating a bit, but, yeah, but, but that ba balancing act is, 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 uh, is, is at times difficult. Mm. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm a, I'm an action-driven individual, so uh, my motto is, you know, done is better than perfect. You know, we need to move on. We need to, you know, to accelerate at times. But maybe, you know, slowing down at times. You know, paying more attention to some of the details. Well, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know battle strategy that's a, a data that supports that statement. Correct. That done outperforms perfect. Yes, but yeah. but I balance better than before. But right. you know, so those are, uh, are the challenges. But but I, I love challenges. The the difficult piece is usually mm. the, the the things I start with. You know, I, if if I'm getting in a routine, when things are good are going well, time to move on. Mm -hmm. Time to do something else. Um, if it's getting too comfortable. And maybe one day... Ah, might, look yeah. at you. That's the secret of life, uh, right? Is is, is kind of staying outside of your... At least I, I went and saw a multimedia display by a, a New York uh, multimedia artist, graphic designer. And it was a guy who had designed a lot. I could, his name escapes me now. Hopefully it'll come to me. But he designed a lot of uh, album covers for Rolling Stones and right. other people. And he looked at sort of the hallmarks of happiness and decided to do a multimedia display that, was, that traveled around North America. And he hit on the obvious things, money, love... Um, but one of the key things that I wasn't expecting to see that he spoke to was just maintaining a sense of adventure. Correct. You embody this, Henry. I mean, it, 100%. it didn't mean you had to go and jump out of a plane every day, but it did mean that you had to consistently expose yourself to new things or new learning or get outside your bubble, your comfort Absolutely. zone. Because the money... It, when you're earning money, it gets to a point where, well, if I earn 20 times more money, am I going to be 20 times more happy? No. Yeah. Right. And he looked at science that backed that up. Um, he looked at getting married, not getting married, having kids, not having kids, and and rank people there. There's elements of happiness there, but really a lot of it came down to once 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 you you're making okay money, you can provide for yourself, you've stabilized in a relationship. It really is about keeping yourself continuously challenged. I agree. I totally right. agree. And uh, not always easy, actually. No. It, you know, sometimes it's tough. Um, but, you know, to me, the worst risk is not to take one. Mm. Um, you know, uh, you, you have to be consistently uh, improving what you're doing or, you know, strive for more. Uh, and I'm not talking about power, money, uh, results. It's just as human being, we need to progress all the time. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I need to be a better dad every day. I need to be a better leader every day. Mm -hmm. I need to be a better runner every day. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and, you know, and one day I'll say, you know what? This is it. This is my comfort zone. This is what I love. 
but I haven't reached this point, and I hope not to reach this point. To be honest with you, yeah. Uh, I hope uh, I hope this will continue. Uh, if if you remove the passion in what you do, I I, I think you need to do something else. Mm. Um, so yeah, striking you know striving for you know doing better, more or or differently is is. Uh, is important for me, mm-hmm. uh, and you know, I've, I, I often say to to people on my team, I say, guys, look at those as opportunities. Uh, when you prepare for a tough call or for a tough change, um, for a new mandate, plan to be successful. Don't fear to lose. If you fear to lose, don't do it. If you know you're gonna make it, you're ready, and go for it. Mm. And you know. 90% of the time it'll work or 80% of the time it'll work. Yeah. Even even if you feel like you have imposter syndrome. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> right. So yeah, you that's, know. that's the way I uh, that's the way I operate uh, mostly. What was your first real music concert? Ooh, the f- the first big one actually was uh, the first big one was in Toronto. Uh, many, many years ago, I, I was in Toronto as a summer student to learn English. Um, and uh, there was the police was playing there. Ah, oh, excellent. And it was a, a full day concert that mm. started at three o'clock, I think, in the afternoon. And, and the police uh, were on stage at 10 o'clock or something. And there were four or five bands before. And I was with uh, someone then. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, we progressed our way. Uh, so when the police, we were on, on, the, on the floor, I guess, or it mm-hmm. was an outside concert. And it took us four bands, actually, to progress all the way. And when the police started, we were front stage. Wow. Touching like the stage. Right up against the stage. Against the stage. So that was that was quite 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 a day. That was the beginning of your marathon training, by the sounds of it. <laughs> yeah, <could be. laughs> right. <laughs> All the compressed bodies in yes, heat. Exactly. So I guess it was summer. It was I don't outside. know how I did that to be honest <laughs> with you, but uh, yeah. So I enjoy concerts. You know, there's there's uh, yeah, yeah, and 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 my my music taste, uh, Chris varies. Uh, mm. I, I can I can be happy in a in a classic concert. I, mm-hmm. You know, I, Rush was probably my favorite band uh, ah, back then when they yeah. played together. And, uh, and I, you know, uh, yeah, I, I love, I love music. Nice. I started playing guitar actually, uh, during COVID. And? It's terrible, but, uh, mm. but I'm terrible, but it, but I love it. Okay. Well, we'll have you back once you're ready to do a live performance yes. on guitar. Oh, I'm not there yet. You can, uh, you can sing a police song yeah. <laughs> or maybe rush. Well, Henry, I mean, I, we've covered a lot of things today, um, but I think, you know, one of the things that is standing out for me is that um, in this industry, there you can do really, you can do anything. I mean, uh, from technology to being on the, on the forefront of dealing direct with, with people on a day-to-day basis. You can be in the background digging into the science behind the UBI and the behavioral analytics of that. Um, we can be looking at product innovation. You can have media spots, <laughs> all that while having a family traveling the country and uh, living your life and getting marathons and skiing in. It, um, it sounds like a life well lived. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, it sounds like uh, same for you, uh, by the way, because uh, you and I went skiing once and uh, was it once or twice anyways? A couple times. A couple yeah. times. And yeah. The last one we were supposed to go out together, mm-hmm. this is where COVID hit the, yeah. the first time. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll come out the other side and we'll have more ski days ahead. Yes. Um, I just want to, Henry, a sincere thank you for your time today and for being so open with us about your experience in the industry and things that light you up in your career and the challenges that you have had and the ones that you see approaching us in the future. Um, it would be great to do a revisit sometime down the road and see how these things turned out. Absolutely. It'd be yeah. a pleasure to come back, Chris, and thank you so much. Okay. And uh, I just want to say as well that uh, mm. it's, 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 a, it's a privilege to be able to work with people like you, uh, Chris, and your team. Mm-hmm. You know, we've got uh, what I consider a very good relationship. We don't take it for granted. It's, a, it's tough out there. It's, it's difficult out there to compete. Mm-hmm in a highly competitive uh, marketplace. And we are very fortunate to have partners like yours uh, to help us out, uh, mutually help us out for the benefit of your clients. So 
So thank you. Thanks oh. for the opportunity. Yeah, you're welcome, Henry, and thank you as well. The, the feeling is mutual. Uh, Intact has certainly been a long time relationship dating back to its earlier iterations of what it is today uh, of Reliance for a long time, and it's had a lot of great people. And, you know, I think, yeah, it's a good, good, good thought. So I think it's a draw, it's on, a draw. On, on, no on the milk, milk challenge. Nobody, good. nobody reached, nobody caved. Clearly, we have to make mm. them spicier next time, Kane, so that it, uh, <laughs> it forces someone's hand. <laughs> well, thank you, Chris. Yeah, yeah. Cheers.